Our final talk of the session is by Thomas Vaughn from UC Riverside, and he will be discussing, oh, is that different? Uh, near infrared coronal line observations of dwarf galaxies hosting AGN driven outflows. All right, thank you, Marla, and uh, thank you for having me. It's uh, great to see some familiar faces. Uh, and if it's our first time meeting, then I can just know that I'm the one with the cat in the Slack channel who is dressed to impress. Uh, okay, so uh, I will discuss uh, optical and near infrared observations of dwarf galaxies that show signatures of AGN activity uh, as well as outflows. And so here I will focus on confirming the presence of AGN in our dwarf sample as well as confirm the outflows we see are actually uh, AGN driven. All right, so before I get to the results, just a quick review. Uh, it's long been thought that stellar processes are responsible for regulating star formation in dwarf galaxies. Example of this being powerful outflows driven by radiation from young stars and supernova. However, recent studies have shown that there could be a surprising number of dwarfs uh, hosting AGN. And so this, you know, of course, raises the question, uh, how large of a role, if any, does AGN feedback play in uh, dwarf galaxy evolution. So some studies have started to look at this, uh, and I plotted this on the diagram on the right, uh, which is a color mass diagram. Uh, and so plotting pink circles are a selection of dwarfs, uh, and due to their, uh, or, or these dwarfs are uh, believed to house uh, agent-driven outflows. So due to the location between the blue cloud and the red sequence, this could suggest that the agent here play a similar role in regulating star formation uh, as they do in the higher mass uh, galaxies. All right, so on to uh, sample selection. So the parent sample of our study was first derived in Manzano King uh, 2019, who made a selection of dwarf galaxies that show optical and infrared signatures of AGN activity. After subsequent Elrid's observations, they found that a number of these dwarfs have extended blue wings in O3, uh, which is a telltale sign uh, that you have an outflow. So on the diagram on the right, they show that the line ratios of these outflows, again represented as the large uh, pink circles, fall in the agent region of the BBT diagram. So although this suggests that agents are involved with outflows, uh, shock ionization from starbursts can often mimic uh, these agent line ratios. And so in this study, we obtained follow-up NIRIS observations of nine dwarfs. Uh, those uh, dwarfs are found in the agent and the composite region uh, of the DBT. Uh, and uh, so we can, our goal was to confirm the presence of AGN. Uh, in those galaxies. In addition, we obtained uh, KCWI data uh, to better explore the outflows detected, uh, which unfortunately I won't be able to briefly gloss over, uh, but more details are provided in uh, Wei-Jay uh, Wei Louis' um, uh, paper that will be uh, coming out pretty soon. Okay, so on to the, uh, our results. So again, our first goal was to confirm the presence of AGN in these galaxies, and we achieved this by using NIRIS to search for near-infrared coronal lines. Uh, coronal lines are highly ionized forbidden transitions uh, that are highly indicative of AGN activity uh, due to their ionization potential as being higher than what stellar processes can typically achieve. In addition, they are often characterized by widths intermediate between the broad and narrow line region, uh, so something like 750 kilometers per second, uh, and typically show peaks blue shifted relative to the systemic velocity of the galaxy. And so because of all these things, uh, they are often associated with uh, outflows. So with NIRIS, we detect coronal line emission in four out of nine galaxies, uh, which is statistically similar to the detection rates found in larger mass uh, galaxy samples. In addition, we do not see strong CN absorption bands at 1.1 microns, uh, which is something you would typically expect to see in young to intermediate aged uh, stellar populations. And so because of this, we don't believe there is a substantial population of these young stars uh, in the central region. Uh, this is important since it suggests that there is a lack of star formation or perhaps supernova that could be driving uh, these outflows. So in other words, uh, there's a good chance that they are actually AGN driven. And the figure I plotted on the right here uh, is a two-component fit to silicon-6, the most common coronal line uh, detected. Uh, it's a big emission line uh, at the very center. Uh, the spectrum is shifted relative to the systemic velocity, and you can see that the 
line here is slightly blue shifted relative to the rest wavelength of silicon six. Okay, so when comparing our uh, corona line emission uh, to recent IFU data from KCWI, we found that uh, the galaxies with the fastest outflows uh, that's measured through W80 and B0 uh, have strong broad corona line emission, which is what I showed you in the previous plot. Looking at the table, uh, we notice that galaxies with the sh uh, strongest corona line emission, so the galaxies with uh, corona line emission are uh, colored in red, those with the strongest corona line emission uh, also have the fastest outflows, right? So there's these top three galaxies right here. The strongest corona line emission have the strongest, uh, uh, fastest outflows. So it's interesting to identify what would be the cause of this, uh, but I have to save speculation till, uh, till after the talk. Okay, so I'll conclude with talking about the ionization source of our detections. Uh, stellar processes, most notably uh, star-driven winds, can induce stock excitation into the surrounding ISM and mimic the effects of Asian ionization. And so to rule out the possibility that we are seeing emission produced by shocks, we compare our line ratios to ionization models uh, from Mappings 3. So here, I've plotted the Asian models uh, or Asian model on the left and a shock bus precursor model on the right, where the precursor gas is a gas that lies ahead of the shock front. And so the free parameters here uh, for the Asian model are alpha, which is the power law index, and the ionization parameter U. For the shock model, we have B, which is a transverse magnetic field, and the velocity, which is just the shock velocity. And so in both models, we set the gas density to a thousand particles per centimeter cube and the metallicity to solar. So looking at the Asian model, notice that uh, the points are four galaxies uh, with corona line emission. They fall within the grid lines of the Asian model. But for the shock and precursor model, notice that they lie offset from the models. So although this may not include, uh, exclude shocks entirely, it's at least strong evidence that Asian are the predominant driving force behind the ionization. I also have optical models uh, that I can show after the talk. And so uh, to summarize, we observe nine dwarf galaxies that likely have Asian driven outflows with night rays and KCWI. Corona lines detected further support the presence of AGN. Our detection rates are consistent with larger mass samples. In addition, we found that faster outflows show stronger corona line emission, uh, and we find that there's not much evidence of a significant solar population at the center. Uh, and also, our aging models are more representative line ratios than shock excitation models. I'd like to end with a big thank you to Percy, Sherry, Joel, Irina, and John for helping us with our observations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have time for questions. Um, Lee Armas has a question. He asks, can you say anything about your limits on the sizes of the highly ionized outflow regions and or the mass involved in the outflowing gas? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, see, for the scales, uh, so for the outflow scales, we see them about to a kiloparsec out. This is the, we measure these through the O3 emission. And so in our KCWI data, we see uh, outflows that go about to a kiloparsec or a little even more than that. Uh, so that's the extent of the outfl outflows. The mass involved in these uh, are, I believe they're about log uh, or 10 to the 1.5 uh, 1 uh, solar masses per year. So something like uh, 0.1 solar masses uh, is what we detected. Great. I had a question. I don't see another one right now, so I'll ask my own. Um, so out of five out of nine of your objects, you don't detect coronal lines. That's um, does that rule out an AGN in that object, or are there other reasons why you might not see those lines? That's an excellent question, actually. Um, so various people have also looked at this, because you find this in, also in, in, in all types, like type ones and type twos. Uh, so the general consensus is that uh, you, here, let me, I can uh, bring up, uh, notice that, you know, the near infrared is plagued by telluric absorption. So sometimes based on your redshift, your uh, corona line could fall into telluric absorption and then you're, you're, you're out of luck. Other times, uh, if your galaxy is really close and you have a lot of stars at the uh, circumnuclear stars that could uh, dilute whatever corona line mission, right? The stars can uh, basically dominate the continuum level 
and that can dilute uh, any coronal line emissions. So people have also speculated at, at that. And, and yeah, uh, uh, Rodriguez Ardila 2011 uh, had a large sample, I think like 50 of these. Uh, and so uh, I know I only gave a brief answer, but if you like some uh, more detail. Uh, awesome. that's, and a that's a great segue to uh, send us over to Slack. Um, so that wraps up the, um, the session. I'd like to thank all of our speakers.